I'll be using these minis in a diorama and I need them to look old. First up, I'm working on this step ladder and I want to sand off some paint. But the paint was really stubborn on this metal ladder and I had to scrape it off with an X-Acto knife. I'll be doing a multi-step process to transform this piece and it starts with a layer of paint. Just one sloppy layer will do and then I'm wiping off the paint in certain areas like these steps to make it look worn and old and then all over just to tone it down. Old white metal often has black spots so I'm using my paintbrush to recreate that effect. I'm topping it off with a simple black wash made from watered down acrylic paint. This ladder isn't finished yet, but while that dries, I'll work on the wheelbarrow. I've always said wheelbarrow instead of wheelbarrow, and I guess that's the wrong way to say it. But I really love this piece. It has a wooden wheel. It's made from metal. It's painted blue, and some of the paint is chipping, so I'm helping it along by scraping it away with my X-Acto knife. When you're aging a miniature, it's good to create wear that's consistent with how the item was used to make it look realistic. So I'm adding scratches to the bottom and front of this wheelbarrow. To add some texture, I'm using one part paint, one part white glue, and one part sand to create a rust paste. I used equal parts of brown and red paint. The red paint has too much purple in it, so I end up toning it down with a little bit of black paint. I'm using a stiff bristled brush to apply it. I'm adding the mixture in places I will later paint to look like rust. The sand creates a nice gritty texture that makes the rust look more realistic. I'll put that aside to dry and show you the cool tools I bought. I picked this up at my local dollhouse store for $6. It includes a handmade wooden toolbox and some tools. They're made from metal and the shears and pliers actually open and close. I'll be aging these metal minis with the technique I created, but first I'm getting started with the wooden toolbox. To make this brand new miniature look old, I'm starting by removing the shiny finish with my emery board, and then I sand deeper to really give it a rustic look. Ultimately, I'll be building a basement diorama with stone walls and a water heater and just filled with lumber and junk and tools, and that's where I'll be using these minis. One of my favorite steps when it comes to aging wood is using some tools I have on hand to create some gouges and damage. For this piece, I used my tweezers and a needle tool I got at the Dollar Tree. Now I'm applying a black wash to settle into the damage and create more contrast. I added black wash to the inside and all four sides. It turned out darker than what I was going for, so I used a nail file to sand it and give it a more subdued appearance. To emphasize the textures I created and to make this piece look even older, I'm using a dry brushing technique. I almost always dry brush with ivory rather than white because I think it creates a more realistic finish. I teach how to dry brush in my easy paint tutorial. You can certainly stop here, but I want to add some of this vintage advertising to look like stickers. I cut out some of my favorites and I'm using matte Mod Podge to apply them. I got these items in an eBay lot that had a whole variety of miniatures but you can buy printables like this from Etsy or maybe find some free printables online. Or if you have the skills in a printer, you can scale down images and make your own. The glue is dry and I wanna make it look like someone tried to peel off this Lucky Strike advertising. I made sure to glue it down very well on all four corners and used my tweezers to pull it off. Now I'm making the stickers look faded. I used the finer grit side of the emery board and went over them very lightly. They were too vibrant before and now they look old, but to make them look even older, I'm covering them with a black wash. I covered all of the stickers aside from the one that I want to look torn. I'll work on the tools later, but for now I'm finishing the ladder. I start by mixing some brown paint into some matte Mod Podge. Then I add two different colors of chalk pastels and mix it up. This is a technique I created myself. I'm using this Mod Podge concoction to tone down this bright green ladder. You may be able to achieve the same type of look with an oil wash, but I haven't tried them yet. I think the paint and the pigment powder combine to give a really grimy aged look. The mixture dries quickly and then I use a q-tip dampened with some rubbing alcohol to highlight certain areas. 
I'm highlighting the bolts in raised areas because these are places where the paint would have rubbed off the most. And then strategically all over the ladder just to create more depth and interest. This little bottle contains chemicals that creates real rust so it doesn't get more realistic than this. It costs $20 a bottle but it's really satisfying to create instant rust. I will make some DIY rust on the cheap later when I finish the wheelbarrow. Looking good so far, but one more thing. I wanted to make it look like over the years a little bit of paint either was dripped on the ladder or someone touched the ladder when they had some paint on their shoe or hand. And then for the top, I wanted to make it look like someone had set down a can of red paint. So I added red paint to the end of a pen and used it like a stamp to create a round impression on the top of the ladder. Now I think this finished piece looks a lot worse than when we started, which in this case is a good thing. Now the wheelbarrow is ready for its finishing touches. I used orange acrylic paint and a secret ingredient to create realistic rust. I'm stippling the orange paint over the textured rust paste. You can layer this and make some areas lighter and some areas darker, which gives a more realistic look. Once the orange is dry, I mix equal parts of silver and gold acrylic paint and dry brush it over the high points of the rust paste. I like the way the metallic sheen catches the light and creates more dimension. The handles had a shiny plastic coating, so I removed it with my emery board and sanded the wheels as well. This final step makes a huge difference. I'm adding powdered chalk pastel to all of the areas with rust effect. This dry matte look is so reminiscent of real rust. Now it's time for the tools. For the hammer, I sanded it lightly and mixed some brown paint into Mod Podge. The Mod Podge sticks to the metal and the brown paint helps tone down the shine. I made a darker mixture of Mod Podge for the wrench so it can settle into the details. I used the same darker Mod Podge on the rest of the tools. To emphasize the details, you can wipe away the Mod Podge while it's still wet or use a damp Q-tip. If the mixture is a little stubborn, you can put some rubbing alcohol or nail polish remover on the Q-tip. All of the handles are painted on, so to create some texture on the hammers, I folded over some painter's tape and trimmed it to size. I painted it black with acrylic paint so it would look like either leather or a rubber handle. For the rest of the red handles, I dry brushed them with the black Mod Podge mixture. To give the claw hammer a different look, I dipped my brush in some Mod Podge and stippled on some black chalk pastel. Then I painted on some of the rust effects I used earlier on the ladder. I added a tape handle and painted it brown. I'd love some ideas about what I should add to my basement workshop diorama. I'm planning on making a hot water heater from trash, maybe having an old screen door in the basement, some lumber, a pegboard with tools. I want to create the underside of a floor, so some floor joists on the ceiling so it really looks like it's in a basement. I'm not sure what else, so I'd love to hear your ideas. Let me know which one of the transformations is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you check out some of my other videos.